Hey everyone, day six today and today is time to open your heart. So we're going to do a nice pose called camel. It's a very tricky one, but it requires a lot of strength in the back body and the front body. So we're going to prepare our bodies for that wonderful pose and we'll see the effects of the pose after. Hope you're ready. And we're starting like that, just sitting onto your heels. I'm sitting on the block actually, because it's a little bit easier. And my block is like this, right on the mid section. So not lowest, but mid. So I'm really elevating my hips. It feels really nice. We're going to do some exercises sitting on the block. So if you feel that you need that elevation, go ahead and join me. Good. We're going to open a little bit of the shoulders just to feel the ease and openness in the body. So as you inhale, you're bringing your arms through the front and up. As you exhale, you're releasing your arms through the sides and down and really small. I mean, big, but slow circles. We're going to do a couple more like this. Exhaling as you're bringing them back. Inhale to the front and up. Exhale through the sides and back. And now we just reverse. Inhale through the back and sides to the, to the sky. Exhale down. And we do one more. And exhale down and one more. Inhale. Feel. Exhale down. Now we're going to do half sun salutation. So your hands will be going through the, uh, through the middle of your chest, palms together, up. And then you open your arms through the sides and bring them back to the front of your chest. Inhale, you can even look up, exhale. One more, inhale, and then exhale through the sides and down. Now with the next inhalation, you're lifting your pelvis and your arms, you look up, exhale, you release your pelvis down and bringing your hands back to the center. Inhale, exhale. And one more inhale and then exhale now we're reversing from there you're going to lift your pelvis and your arms going through the sides and up exhale your wrist down inhale and exhale down inhale lift your pelvis arms up exhale palms down and one last time exhale down Good. Now release your hand. You have a second block. I don't, I didn't bring it. So it can be on the front, on the floor. But if you have a block, so you don't have to lean too much. If you're leaning, if you don't have a block, try to release the left side of the pelvis. So my right hand on the floor, the left side of the pelvis, press it down. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, open to the side. You can look up. But the more you press with your left hip down, the more you can bring your left arm overhead and the more stretch you feel to the whole left side of the body, you can move your right hand slightly away from you. And then we switch sides, so left hand to the floor, press with your right hip down, inhale, right arm overhead, exhale, right arm overhead. You can look up, there. some people prefer looking down, see where you're, in which position your neck feels uh, comfortable. And we'll do one more time. Right hand down, inhale, left arm up, press with your left sitting bone down, exhale, twist, look down, or look up. Press actively with the left sitting bone down. And we switch, left hand onto the floor, inhale, right arm up, press with your right sitting bone down, exhale, your body goes over towards your left, lengthening through the crown of your head, Lengthening through your right fingertips, feeling the whole stretch, the stretch to the whole right side of the body. Good. Inhale, come back to the center. Inhale in the center. Exhale, you're twisting. Remember we did it yesterday. So your pelvis stays neutral and you're twisting from your navel up. So you're just bringing your sternum towards your right. Your left hand goes to the outside of your right thigh. Your right hand goes to your lower uh, right ribs and gently pull them in and pull them towards your right. Inhale here, 
exhale twist keep your right shoulder down and move your sternum sternum moves towards your right keep your shoulders over your pelvis inhale lengthen exhale twist on the next inhale you gaze forward and then you untwist inhale in the center exhale sternum twisting towards your left right hand to the outside of your left thigh left hand onto your lower ribs close them in inhale here exhale twist towards your left and feel that both sitting bones are pressing equally down towards the floor stay here inhale lengthen exhale twist inhale lengthen exhale twist on the next inhale head forward then undo your twist well done then from there remove the block and come standing to the front of your mat um, actually let's use a block for the next exercise because quite often if, especially um, when you're a beginner it's quite difficult for you to feel the right activation of the legs and we're going to do a chair pose and we're going to twist in the chair pose then place your block in between your knees actively press onto that block so you don't want to lose that block for that you need to be really actively pressing and when you do that you feel the activation of your shins and the activation of your inner thighs and this is what exactly needs to happen in Utkatasana and then start bending your knees moving the weight of your pelvis towards your or weight of your body towards your heels you can lift your toes off the floor you see I'm not bearing any weight there I release them down but I keep them light then stick your bum out stick your bum out stick your bum out relax your arms let them dangle down but shoulders moving actively away from your ears close your lower ribs keep your pelvis moving down press onto the block and if you feel steady you can bring your arms overhead Utkatasana we are activating the back body which will be holding us today for our camel then bring your arms together palms together uh, let me move this a little bit down so palms touching then inhale here exhale you slightly twisting towards your right and see if you can um, right left forearm can come to the outer right shin keep pressing into the block inhale here exhale see if you can twist a little bit more towards your right moving your right shoulder back and twisting your sternum towards your right good you feel burning sensations in your thighs in your quadriceps in your hips this is fine on the next inhale to the center and right away exhale towards your left right forearm to the outside of your left thigh inhale lengthen and press onto the block press with your forearm onto the thigh and twist towards your left left shoulder goes back sternum twisting towards your left keep breathing one more inhale exhale come back to the center arms overhead two more breaths you can do it press onto the block and then exhale block to the side and dangle down well done keep your knees slightly bent you can walk your feet here good from there inhale lengthen bend your knees more lengthen through your sitting bones lengthen through the crown of your head close your lower ribs exhale bend your knees more place your hands step your right foot back step your left foot back press with your hands down press with your toes down press the floor away move your shoulders close your lower ribs hold your back body in your plank if it's too much for you you can always release your knees down otherwise just stay there good use your core your core is working then bend your knees start sending your hips up and back downward facing dog keep your knees slightly bent and work towards lengthening your sitting bones up and away your neck is long your neck is relaxed you can wiggle your neck yes or no a few times then find your inner arms inner biceps and roll them up towards the sky and that small action will move your shoulder blades away from your ears and down towards your back close your lower ribs stay here you can start paddling your feet 
one at a time. Well done. On the next inhale, look to the front. As you exhale, um, actually, let's lift your right leg up. And as you inhale, as you exhale, draw the knee in towards the chest, round your spine. Use your core here as well. Then exhale, step it to the front. If you need to help yourself with your hand, go ahead. Release your left knee down. Inhale, come up. Low lunge. So if your left knee is complaining, you know that you can double up your mat. Or sometimes you just back up the knee left knee slightly back and then bring it forward so it's when it's not on the kneecap it's not that sensitive try some people are very have very sensitive knees they need you know doubling up of the mat a blanket or there is special kind of um you know it's like a small small pillow for your knee so you can uh, google and see if if you need one and see if you know it works for you good the right hip down and back without moving your knees close your lower ribs shoulders above your pelvis inhale arms up stay here exhale release your left hand to the floor and slightly away from your right heel and your thumb will be uh, pointing up towards the sky inhale lengthen to the crown of your head exhale twist towards your right keep your lower ribs Closed, bring your right arm up. So it's almost like a back bend here. If you feel steady, for stage two, I would ask you to lift your left knee off the floor. And if you feel comfortable, keep rolling your right sitting bone down and find the length to come to a back bend almost here. But keep gently pressing your lower ribs in. On the next inhale, come back, hands framing your right foot. Exhale, step your right foot back. Well done. Paddle your feet and your down dog. Or you can bend your knees, sending your hips up and back. Don't collapse with your shoulders. Keep them lifted, but melt behind the heart. Good, a little bit more of a paddling. Keep, uh, take your dog for a walk. Good. On the next inhale, we do a second side. So you're lifting your left leg from your left inner thigh. So you're not opening your hip. You're keeping your hip closed. Exhale, knee towards the chest. And then step it by your left thumb with the help of a hand or just right away. Knee on the floor. Again, backing up your knee and sliding it forward. You know, it seems to help for me. It seems to help for me. So uh, you can try. Left knee above the ankle. And again, some people do that. We need to keep that engagement of the core. Shoulders directly above your pelvis. Left sitting bone under. Arms overhead. So if you do it right, you feel the activation of your front right thigh. So it's a little bit of a stretch there. Then right hand down. And I'm opening slightly to the side. My thumb pointing towards the front of the mat. Inhale, lengthen to the crown of the head. Exhale, left arm up. Keep sending your left sitting bone under. And from there, you're twisting and opening from your navel up. Opening almost like a back bend. Then if you feel steady, you can lift your right knee of the floor, finding a more of a back bend there. Keep your right hand heavy. On the next inhale, slowly come back from your left foot. Step back, downward facing dog. And again, if you need to paddle your feet, go ahead. Just simply bend your knees and feel that your weight is equally distributed between your hands and your feet. So by actively sending hips up and back, you feel that more weight coming down towards your feet. Good. On the next inhale, lift your heels even higher up than your pelvis, then round your spine and come towards your plank. One more 
plank for today hold your back body press with your hands push the floor away lower your mm, close your low ribs and move your navel in and up a little bit feel the activation of the core feel your back body exhale knees to the floor then slowly brush your body with the elbows don't open them to the side keep them close and release your chest and chin then release your body all the way down hands to the sides of your chest spread your fingers wide we're going to use them a lot now bring your elbows facing down not to the side but down and then gently roll your shoulders back so you feel that your shoulders are in line with your elbows but not below release your forehead down on the next inhale i want you to start pressing with the area below your navel down towards the floor you feel the activation of the core of the deep core muscles there exhale you press press even more on the next inhale start pressing with your hands so your hands are li um, lifting your body elbows to the back you lift lift press with your belly down maybe you just here look in front of you shoulders back you're holding your body with your hands and your arms and by pressing and activating your belly muscle muscles you're relaxing your glutes you're keeping your lower back long the moment you're activating your deep core muscles your lower back is protected and it stays long exhale release it down we're going to repeat a couple more times inhale press with your hands lift your shoulders and imagine you're coming up with the back of your head somebody's lifting the back of your head up maybe this time you can come a little bit higher press your pubic down exhale down inhale right away up hands pressing onto the floor lift yourself by using your hands keep your elbows slightly bent keep closing your lower ribs but move your shoulders towards the back and away from the ears exhale down we're going to repeat it one more time inhale hands down lift your body with your hands shoulders back engage your deep core muscles press with your pubic down move your shoulders so they're not here move them away away so your sternum goes forward but you keep the deep in, um, engagement of the deep core muscles there exhale down and right from there hands to the back palms facing up and we're going to do one shalabhasana we're going to lift your shoulders your neck and your head as whole by pressing the back of your head up at the same time you will be lifting your arms and hands palms facing up and your legs so just relax here as you're inhaling press the back of your head up lift your shoulders lift your arms lift your legs all those points at the same time imagine that somebody is moving your hands up towards the sky and away from your shoulders it will move your shoulders away you can look slightly in front of you feel your back body you can even bring your feet together and legs together if it works for you otherwise keep them hip distance apart one more inhale exhale release Whew, well done almost there make a pillow out of your hands start wiggling your pelvis from side to side mm. and right from there from your belly we're going to do a stretch for our quadriceps for the front side of our thighs because we will need them for the final pose come to your sphinx elbows underneath your shoulders and angle bring your left forearm diagonal uh, so your left hand pointing towards the right angle right front front angle of your mat good then bend your right knee move the body weight towards your left elbow try to move the left shoulder that left shoulder away reach back and grab to the inside of your left ankle or left foot and if you can place your hand on top of the ankle so you see my elbow pointing up towards the sky 
from there first start kicking that foot away so you will be lifting a little bit higher if it's too much for your lower back you can always lower a little bit down and bring that left elbow away from your left shoulder towards the front of the mat you kick the foot away and your hand tries to bring the foot in so it's like a resisting point there from there if you feel that you bring that knee that heel in towards the thigh heel in towards your glute in towards your buttock maybe your knee will be coming off the floor and this is fine for the next stage if you feel like you need more because you are not coming towards the healthy edge of the pose you can place your hands so your toes uh, and your fingers will be pointing to the same direction yeah like this and you try to do it from there and if you're pretty open then your heel will be going slightly to the outside of the buttock and release well done we do the opposite side so elbows right elbow underneath the shoulder or if you know that you need more space bring it slightly forward right away um, place your forearm diagonal bend your left knee reach back with your left hand grab the inside and then place your palm on top of the ankle so your left elbow pointing up try not to open that knee too much to the side so there is a hip distance in between your knees and again first kick that foot away kick that foot away your hand trying to bring that foot in but knee or oh, but your foot resists it will move you slightly up if you have on the other side you have more space you can place that hand right hand on the floor and come up so it's almost like a back bend, but your sternum facing towards the front you're not opening too much towards your left and then release the elbow and start kicking that foot in towards your buttock maybe you need to come a little bit deeper and stay there if you knee coming off the floor this is fine keep breathing and slow release well done come to a tabletop come to chairs for a moment and we're ready for the camel so for the camel uh, I would suggest that we do it with the block I sometimes do this doubling up of the mat some people they need more than double so they do even that so I have more space it's up to you you place your knees there maybe you just use a blanket then grab your block and put it in between your thighs and it will be the same action you're holding onto the block you're engaging your inner thighs to keep that block because when we go down the tendency for the knees to go slightly apart and you would lose the block it would drop down towards the floor we don't want that we want to have that engagement good then from there i want you to place your fists onto your sacrum and we are going to start we, we're going to start with pressing so your shoulders to the back you're keeping your side body long and gently closing your lower ribs then you press forward with your um, thumb, thumbs or your fists and then forward and down so you feel that your lower back becoming long but you're not flaring your ribs you're not dropping your belly forward it would crunch your lower back by engaging your deep core muscles and pressing your sacrum forward and down you would feel that you're creating space in your lower back and that's what we want space in your lower back so it's protected it's keep it's staying long and then you're slightly starting bring uh, starting opening your shoulders more and bringing your sternum up towards the sky so your the crown of your head will lead the way on the way back so press with your fists down uh, forward and then down 
So your thigh is going slightly forward and then allow the crown of your head so you're not dropping your neck. You're keeping your neck long, shoulders away from the ears and then your sternum goes up towards the sky. Don't forget to breathe in the pose. Keep pressing with your fists. And if you do it right, there is no crunching sensations. There is no compression in your lower back at all. Inhale here. Exhale, come back. Remove the block. Sit onto your heels, close your eyes. We're going to repeat it one more time. And I personally think that this way of coming into the camel is one of the safest for the beginners. So we're not grabbing onto the heels because the, the tendency would be to flare out your ribs and compress, really compress your lower back. But we want to keep it spacious. We want to keep it um, long and protected. Yeah. So when you're ready, come back. And again, let's do it with the block. There is no problem with that. It really, really helps you to feel the activation of your legs. And if you're uh, following my instructions, I thought, I think that you've uh, felt that your legs are working like crazy. It's not much about your upper back. It's more about the stability in your uh, thighs and your thighs and your hips and the right positioning of your sacrum. Yeah. And remember the deep core muscles are protecting our lower back. We don't want to lose that. Good. Again, we, we're just repeating the same one. I think this is okay for today. We've worked hard already. So fists on your sacrum, then inner thighs, pressing onto the block, engaging your inner thighs, and then slowly start moving your sacrum by pressing your fists on it, forward first and then down. So kind of bringing it down. You feel that your lower back is really spacious, shoulders back, and then the crown of your head leads the way, it goes up and then back, so your sternum opening up towards the sky. Keep pressing actively with your fists, so keeping your lower back long. And maybe this time you will be able to go a little bit deeper. And keep breathing. I'm not dropping my neck, my neck is long. The crown of my head is leading the way. One more inhale. And then exhale, slowly come back. Remove the block, sit onto your heels. Oh, well done. This is such a um, deep pose. It has such a tremendous effect on your whole body and your mind, on your consciousness. Just experience that. Good. Well done. Are you ready? Gently open your eyes. I promise there won't be anything crazy. Now we just need to slightly um, prepare our body for Shavasana. So lay down onto your back. Bend your knees, place your feet on the floor. Now lift your pelvis and that block goes to the lowest setting underneath that sacrum which we were pressing on. So the bony part of your back right above your buttocks. I mean even you know part of your buttocks on the on the blocks right now. Good. Wiggle your shoulder blades so place them flat so you have a nice connection and your shoulders wide and spacious and the tops of your shoulders pressing onto the floor. Now lift your right leg up. Again, it can be straight leg or bent leg and left leg up. Close your lower ribs, place your hands onto your lower ribs. Close your eyes. Try to relax your legs. You just keep them up so all the fluids, all the liquids can go all the way down towards the heart. We're kind of allowing the blood return back to the heart and it really 
relaxes our legs and helps our hips to relax as well. Good, and bend both knees, bring them in towards the chest, interlace your hands on top of your right knee, extend your left leg and slowly release it down towards the floor. Keep your toes pointing up and move your left heel away from you. Feel the stretch to the left soles muscles, to the left hip flexors there. And now drop your leg. So your foot dropping to the side. You keep pressing down with your right side of your pelvis so you're not leaning towards your left. And you would feel more of a opening towards your soles muscles there. And then we switch sides, feels nice, right? Then left knee in towards the chest, you're placing your interlaced fingers on top of the knee, right leg straight, slow release it down, toes pointing up for the moment, move the heel away. Feel the activation of those muscles, and then drop your leg. So your foot dropping to the side, but you're pressing with the left side of your pelvis down, so you keep your pelvis neutral there. Feeling the stretch, the opening to the right side of your thighs muscles. Good, and again, bend your right knee and bring your legs up. This time, bring your arms up. Start shaking your arms and your legs. You can uh, circle your ankles and your wrists and a little bit more. So we're like engaging this uh, reversed flow of the liquids all the way and down towards your heart. And then slowly feet down, lift your pelvis, remove the block, move it to the side, release your pelvis down, and enjoy your Shavasana. Even if it's a few moments, even if it's just a few breaths, it's very important that you're coming down towards sh to Shavasana after your practice. Mm, feel good, feels good. And if you need to release any tension from the body, the best way is to inhale through your nose and then sigh it out through your mouth. <sighs> Let's do it one more time. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. <sighs> Good. Just drop any tension. Make sure that your legs are not holding any tension unconsciously. You can just really drop your feet towards the side, you can wiggle your pelvis to make sure that there is no tension in your pelvis and your pelvic floor, your belly is relaxed. Good, and then slow, start slowly wiggling your toes, your fingers, your ankles, your wrists, bring your arms overhead. Give yourself a nice stretch. Good, and then roll to the right side of your body. Stay there for a moment. And then with the help of your left hand, come all the way back up. You can sit on the block. I prefer sitting on the block. If you don't need one, just sit cross-legged position. Or if you prefer Vrasana or Japanese style, go ahead. And just one more time, shoulders over your pelvis, close your lower ribs, close your eyes, feel your body. And then hands in front of your chest. Bring your chin in towards your chest, keep your spine straight. And then with the th um, thumbs touch onto your third eye, you can bow a little bit deeper. Namaste. Thank you guys for practicing, for watching for following and let me know how you feel and we'll see, I'll see you all tomorrow for the day seven and day seven will be about relaxing so it's uh, um, half of the practice half of the challenge so I think we build up enough strength enough uh, power in the body but we need to balance it with the more relaxing way of um, uh, feeling the body and strengthening or relaxing the body and um, opening the body. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> good. So see you all tomorrow. 
Love to all. Namaste.